so you have some brown areas in your lawn and you're not really sure uh, what it is. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to play detective on your lawn and figure out what's causing the browning in your lawn. So let's get out of the weeds. Thank you guys for coming back to yet another video. If you guys like these videos that I'm putting out, please be sure to like and subscribe to this channel if you're not already. I really do appreciate it. So here I am again on another really hot day with temperatures in the upper 80s. And so many of us, as we're going to be looking at our, at our lawn here rolling into summer, we're going to start seeing different brown areas in our lawn. And for many of you, if you're just getting started, you may not really know what you're looking at. And so today I want to address uh, with the typical things that you may be seeing in your lawn and what could be causing those browning areas in your lawn. So whenever we get into summer and you see br a brown area in your lawn, it's typically going to be one of three things, either from the heat, from insects, or from disease. So over the last couple months, I've done in-depth videos on both heat stress and on insects. And so I'm not going to do a deep dive into that. Today I'm going to focus more on the disease, but I want to quickly give you guys a way to be able to, to differentiate between all three of them. So if we're talking about a heat stress lawn, the first thing we got to ask ourselves is, is your lawn getting enough water or not? Are you watering it or are you not watering it at all and just letting whatever rain you get be it? And then so if that's the case with typically with heat stress lawn if you're not watering at all you probably will see this all throughout your lawn so if your whole entire lawn is kind of turning brown a little bit that's probably a really good sign that it's a heat stress problem if you are watering it could be that you're not getting complete coverage so verify first that you're getting complete coverage uh, with your either your sprinkler system or your just your individual sprinklers that you're putting out because if you're not getting the proper coverage, you could see just one small area in your lawn start to go brown while the rest of your lawn is getting the adequate water it needs. Now quickly to insects. Typically with insect damage, it's not going to be over the whole entire lawn. And so it would be more of a section of your lawn that you'll see, and it might just get bigger and bigger and bigger, but typically it's not going to just start out as a whole section of your lawn. So with dealing with insect damage, the main ones you're going to be seeing are grubs and sod webworm. And so with grub damage, if you see a brown spot in your lawn that like the grass is just dead, pull, try to pull it up. With grubs, it should pull right up. And then the other thing is with sod webworm, as we get further into the year, you should start to notice the presence of lawn moths as, you, as you're mowing and as you're kind of walking through your lawn. And so I'd mentioned that in my grub video that I did, it was a little bit early, so we weren't quite seeing the lawn moths, but just the, my last time I mowed, I actually uh, found a lawn moth uh, in my yard as I was mowing. And so I stopped and took a picture, which I'll put up on the screen here. And so you should start seeing those. If you start seeing presence of those, then you could start getting knowing that, okay, you're gonna have a sod webworm problem. And then also with insect damage, some, depending on which insect it is, you may actually see like physical, like chunks bitten out of the leaves because some of the insects that are on top of the ground are actually biting the actual leaf blades. And so if you look at the leaf blades and they're actually kind of getting chewed up, then you, you have insect damage that you're dealing with. Now, when it comes to getting disease in your lawn, it can actually be quite difficult to identify what you actually have going on. And so if you've kind of followed those checklists of what I told you to look out for, uh, for heat stress and for insect damage, if it's none of those, then there's a chance that it could be lawn disease. And so what you want to do, if you suspect you have some kind of disease going on, look for a specific small area because most lawn diseases aren't going to just take over your whole lawn right away. It's usually going to start in a small circular area and, and it'll, it'll grow and get bigger and bigger. If you're constantly mowing it and mulching your clippings, it can spread all about your lawn, but it's usually going to start off in a smaller area. And so if you see a small discolored area, just get down a little bit lower and actually take a look at the individual grass blades. And this will be a good sign to whether you're dealing with disease or not. Most of your lawn disease that you're going to be seeing, they all look very similar. And so it's very hard to differentiate between the two unless you really know your grass type and really what to look for. 
Well, with us with cool season grass, most of us are going to have lawns that are a mixture of all the different cool season grasses all in one. So you're not going to be able to just eliminate certain diseases because some are more prevalent than others. And so if you're like me, where you have just a wide variety of grasses, you're open to all different kinds of possibilities to what kind of lawn disease you could have. Those of us who have older lawns, and so I'm talking lawns that have been there 10, 20, 30 plus years, to have older lawns so you have older varieties of grass seed in your lawn and so as kind of time has gone on they've developed these different grasses to be a lot more resistant to a lot of the diseases so chances are if your lawn's older and you have so since you have older varieties of cool season grass you're probably going to be a lot more susceptible to lawn disease me personally Every year I go through a one or two week stretch to where my lawn usually just gets ravaged with disease and looks really, really brown. I put stuff on and then I get it better. In order for disease to show up in your lawn, it needs three things. It needs a pathogen, a susceptible plant, and the right conditions. And so two of those are always there. You always have your grass, a susceptible plant is your grass. Your grass is always there, so it's that you have one there, and then the pathogens. Pathogens are always there, lying in wait, just waiting for the right conditions. So two of the three conditions are usually almost always met uh, for there to be disease. It's just waiting for the right condition to show up. And so now, the typical times you're gonna be seeing disease show up in our cool season grass are gonna be times of seasonal changes. So coming from winter into spring, a lot of times you'll see lawn disease very early often with say snow mold and some of those others. And then the next one would be when we go from spring to summer. So we get in the spring, we have cooler temperatures and a lot of rain. And next thing we go, in a period of a few weeks, we go from little rain to high temperatures. And so this really stresses the grass out and gives us our third condition we need. And next thing you know, your lawn gets disease. So one of the tricky things with lawn disease is that it can get started by a large variety of ways. If you are putting down too much fertilizer, so your lawn's getting too much nutrients, the pathogens can just see that as almost like a bank robber and they come and they just want to jump on that plant because they see the excess uh, nitrogen and stuff because our lawns our grass can actually store up the nutrients if we put down too much and then the pathogens and that see that and they'll attack it then if you don't put enough fertilizer on your lawn it's a weakened grass and so the pathogen can attach it that that way as well and so if you do too little fertilizer you can be susceptible to disease. If you do too much, you can be susceptible to disease. So it's really important to make sure you're adequately putting down the right nutrients on your lawn. The same goes for watering. If you do too little of water, then your grass is going to be uh, really weakened because it's not getting adequate water. And so it's going to be weak and then the, it'll be susceptible to the disease. The same thing is if you do too much water, if you're just constantly keeping your grass in a state of being wet and never letting it dry out, then it's also going to be susceptible to the disease. So that's why it's important to follow the perfect right amount of water that your lawn needs to kind of keep a perfect balance. You don't want to go too little or way too much on really anything in your lawn. So before I talk about how to prevent or cure lawn disease, I want to talk about some of the typical diseases that we'll see in our cool season lawns. The first one I want to talk about is leaf spot. So with leaf spot, what you want to look for are small oval spots. It can affect all of the cool season grass types, but Kentucky bluegrass is the one that it affects the worst. This is a disease caused from your lawn getting too much nitrogen. And so this is why it's critical for whenever, especially when we get into the summer, that we kind of back it down a little bit and don't push our lawn too hard, especially when we know our lawn is stressed out. The next one we see often is dollar spot. And this a lot of times will be a brown area, usually beginning with the size of about a softball. You'll typically see this in the spring or the fall and is caused by either low water or low nitrogen. And so if you see the differences between the first two diseases I mentioned, 
the first one with leaf spot was caused by pushing it too hard by too much nitrogen with dollar spot it's usually because you have a nitrogen deficiency and so to cure it usually you put down nitrogen and that'll usually help clear it up the next common one we see is rust it's an orange powder that you will actually see come off on your shoes as you kind of walk through it so it's kind of orange and powdery on the grass blades Kentucky bluegrass is most susceptible to it and you're normally going to see this in warm moist conditions with heavy dew and so this is also another disease that is caused by a nitrogen deficiency so if you're not putting down enough nitrogen you're going to be more susceptible the next one I want to talk about is brown patch brown patch is one that you're going to see in the summer and primarily affects tall fescue grass and what this is going to look like is going to be circular dead patches and brown patch can be caused by over fertilization and the final one I want to talk about is summer patch this happens in the spring but you see the damage in the summer and so a lot of times what's going to cause summer patch is whenever you're going from wet cold conditions to dry hot conditions this can help create the right environment for this disease to thrive. So now there's many other diseases I could talk about but those are some of the typical common ones that you will see and so this may seem like just a ton of information thrown at you and you may not really even know uh, where to kind of get started and so that's why, I'm, why I wanted to create this video because to cure it and to prevent these you can always use pretty much the same method so the easiest thing for somebody just getting started in the lawn care is just to use Scott's Disease X and so you can see right here I'm holding a bag of it uh, this will be in pretty much every uh, big box hardware store uh, you'll just see the, a bag usually in this size I think they have a bigger bag but one of these bags covers 5,000 square feet and so if you have a little bit bigger lawn than that you can always just get two bags now with Scott's Disease X what this is is it's actually a granular so it goes down very very similar uh, to putting down a fertilizer application and so you can actually use Disease X to prevent lawn disease and to also cure them and so this could be the same thing you're putting down to help cure it all as well as actually putting down ahead of time to prevent from ever getting disease so taking a look at the back of the bag here you can see a list of all the diseases that Scott's Disease X will help take care of an important thing to look at whenever you're paying attention to the back of the bag is the separate rates so they have a preventative rate and a curative rate and so if you don't yet have disease in your lawn but know that the conditions are right for it you can put this down at the lower rate showing two pounds per thousand square feet if you have disease in your lawn already you can put it down at the curative rate which is four pounds per thousand square feet now once you put down disease X you want to get it watered in and so on the back of the bag it recommends watering for 15 to 20 minutes on the areas that you put this down if you're not going to get rain within the next 24 hours and so if you don't want to have to water it in make sure you're timing it up close to when it's going to be rain raining shortly thereafter the other interesting thing with disease X is that you can actually put it down more than once and so don't worry about getting the timing perfect because you might be thinking okay if I put it down and then I don't have disease what about if I get disease later on in the year well there's that there's always that possibility because the seasons are constantly changing and so with Scott's disease X actually on the back of the bag it says that the maximum that you can put down per year is 37 pounds for every thousand square feet so you would literally get just under 10 applications of this if you really wanted to I don't think that you're going to need to use it more than once or maybe twice depending on how much disease you're dealing with in your lawn thing I wanted to quickly talk about is that I'm getting ready to put down my third application of the year of uh, fertilizer it's just about that time again and so this is another one that I've never really used I was able to just walk in and get this from a local hardware store 
um, and so I'll see how this one kind of goes. One of the things to look out for whenever you're getting a fertilizer, especially whenever we're getting into summer, is make sure it has potassium. Potassium is going to be the nutrient that helps your lawn fight disease and help it to heal up quickly if you do get disease. And so if you're going to be putting down fertilizer in the summer, make sure it has some potassium, which is going to be that third number. And so if you see there on my 2905, it's that five, 5% 5 of the spag is uh, potassium. And so with that, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you guys have any questions, be, feel free to leave a comment and I'll be sure to uh, answer it and help you the best that I can. And so with that, I'll see you guys next time when we get out of the weeds into a beautiful lawn.